Hello, this is a Asus Zenith Extreme and underneath my water block here I have a CPU with many many cores. We have um, four of these Patriot Viper 4400C19 sticks which are never going to get to that speed on this board and um, as you can see this board is in excellent condition by the uh, VRM heatsink being missing. I haven't got any PS2 ports either which is kind of sad so we're just stuck with USB keyboard and mouse and uh, the chipset heatsink is also spectacular it's actually working so that's nice uh, it's also not got a CMOS battery but anyway uh, the first time I booted it up it only detected 24 gigs of RAM so I had to reseat it and now it's got 32 so you can also see the temperature is 11 degrees celsius and uh, what I've just done is I've loaded one of the memory presets which is 3600 1.4 volts for single sided Samsung B die which is what memory we're using and that's just uh, giving us some baseline timings there hopefully it's on 1T commander 8 no it's on, it's on 2T so I changed that to 1T and we're just going to leave it stock to start with and see what it boosts up to because I'm uh, interested to see what it will actually do on auto with a 32 core CPU so yeah we have got the 2990WX 32 core in there so anyway let's boot into Windows and see what happens so finally I've got it into Windows it put up a little bit of a fight there it wasn't able to boot at 3600 with 1T so I've just knocked it back to 3200 uh, with the same memory settings and timings CPU is still on whatever it's at auto so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a Cinebench R15 and this should literally take a couple of seconds I think so we'll see what speed it gets up to Okay, so it looks like it's about 3.2, 3.3 gigahertz overall, 5,000 points. So pretty quick. I mean, it's quite a bit quicker than a uh, i7 7820X, but that's only got eight cores, so that's kind of to be expected, isn't it? So let's run it again and see. Yeah, only 5,000 points. So let's see what kind of temperatures we're getting. This is going to be hilarious because it has 32 cores. So, <laughs> there we go. My camera would uh, stop derping out. Let's see what the temperatures are like. Temperature, CPU temperatures there. So I'm not sure which one's that one. I think it's this one here. Actual CPU temperature. And then there's core temperatures here. Okay, so it's only got the first die worth of cores there. Let's try HWBOT X265 because that might put a bit more stress on it. So we'll go 4K overkill for normal. Run that. So there we go, that's started now. My phone would catch up. That is going. And uh, as you can see it seems pretty chilly. 30 degrees Celsius. Wow that is very cold indeed. I think it'll only be running around 3.4 gigahertz. So this is clearly quite slow. This is no good. And it's only running at about 1 volt. Let's see what CPZ says. It's normally pretty accurate for the voltage on Asus boards. Okay, so CPZ says 1.134 volts. 
and 3.4 gigahertz. So even though it's running freezing cold, it's not boosting very high. That's probably because it's a second gen Ryzen and not a third or the fifth. So it doesn't quite have as clever algorithm for the uh, boosting, I guess. So we'll see what FPS it gets at the end anyway. Okay, so we're getting some weird performance variants here. You can see two of the dies were going really quick and the other two were going a quite a lot slower. So I'm not sure whether that's something to do with it having 32 cores, but I might just try overkill mode in X2 rather than X4 next time. So, because the variance was obviously too high. So let's run two and see what happens there instead. Whether they stay more even. So when it's in normal mode, it should stay pretty even. And it looks like it is a bit more even now. So, let's close that. We're going to overclock it. We'll start it uh, probably 3.8 and work our way up and see what it can do. So I've just manually set the voltage to 1.25 volts and the core to 3.8 just to see. We'll do a quick Cinebench run and it scores about 6,000 points. You can see how quickly it does it there on R15. So yeah, about, about 6,000 just under. That's not too bad, so we'll save, we'll save that score. And uh, let's see what the temperatures are like. Probably still fine at this uh, temperature, they're pretty cool. So, here we go. So bring up hardware bot X265 again. Off it goes again. Hopefully we get a nice even score this time and it looks like it's hitting about 40 degrees. I don't know what top temperature is there. I don't know whether that is the CPU temperature on the bottom one. It says this is not true die temperature so that's some weird offset. So this is the actual CPU temperature so I assume this T die one's correct. So it's only running at 40 degrees, which seems quite cool, considering uh, it's running a benchmark here. That one almost seems more realistic to me, but who knows. So you can see we've still got the same memory clocks as before. It says it's drawing 200 amps peak. Say a wattage anywhere. It says 327 watts. I'm not sure how accurate that is for the whole CPU. Oh, can even do power per core there. That's pretty cool. A lot of them. <laughs> oh, that's node 2. Oh, I see. It has a different temperature for each node. It says 3, 2, 1, and 0. Alright, okay, that makes sense now. So they've got a different CPU temperature for each one. Anyway, it's just finished. It's got 27.9 FPS, that doesn't seem too great, but that is on 4K. So, at least we've worked out what the temperatures are now. So, what's the hottest die then? That one was 37. That one was 39. This one was 37. This one's 41. So, the zero is the hottest one, so that's good. So, as long as we don't get this one over sort of 80 degrees, I think we're alright. So, we'll overclock it a bit more, see how high we can go. So now I'm running 4 gigahertz, 1.25 volts still. So the temperature shouldn't go up too much, although the current will go up quite a bit, I would have thought, with all these cores. Let's run a quick R15 again. Should be over 6,000 now, and it is indeed. 6,293. I think it would uh, benefit from more memory speeds to be fair. Yeah, 
6,200 ish. So it's an extra 400 points. I'll save the score. I'm mainly interested in the current actually as well as the temperatures. So that package power down there and the current and uh, we'll just take the temperatures from node 0 I think. So we established that one was the hottest one anyway. So right, let's go overkill 4k number 2 and that so it's going now and all right okay so it's pulling quite a bit more power than before 300 watts you can see there 200 amps that says 250 that says 300 so I think that includes the IO dies I'm not sure to be honest so temperature wise still not very warm at all I think this one was the hottest one at 42 degrees that sounds very cool so here we go that's finished 335 watts in the end 29.01 fps so not quite 30 fps yet we'll try and get to 30 but I think memory will help quite a lot in X265 4K got it running 4.2 I've just increased the voltage from 1.25 to 1.3 volts didn't crash but uh, I think it'll probably need a bit more voltage at this setting so I mean it's not even starting so I think it might even have crashed at 1.3 to be fair it's frozen so yeah starting to need a bit more voltage now for 4.2 by the looks of it let's see if it will blue screen or not take that as a no right okay it's taken 1.375 volts to get it stable at 4.2 it's a massive jump in voltage from 4.7 gigahertz so it's going to be pretty hilarious to see what the uh, power usage and temperatures are going to be like but uh, we'll see how it goes anyway uh, I don't think it's going to get much more than 4.2 considering how much it took to get to 4.2 so I'll run that again and just make sure that works twice which it does so it's got 40, uh, 6450 which isn't spectacular but we'll go with it again it, it needs a memory overclocking a bit more as well so uh, okay let's see what kind of temperatures we're getting here let's go in so let's see how much power it's pulling 370 watts 380 watts so yeah around 400 watts that's quite a lot of power but not as much as I expected given the uh, big voltage increase so it's a bit uneven but we're getting close to 30 fps now I think with some memory tweaking we'll probably get there it's still not very balanced either the uh, multiplier factor there is not great you want that to be like 0.999 is best or 0, 1 or 1 0 rather is best so 53 degrees 80 on that other temperature there 423 watts not too bad so the memory clock makes a huge huge difference to the score I've just bumped it up to 33.33 and we've uh, tightened the timings a bit down to C15 there and uh, you can see we've actually gained uh, 150 points at the exact same clock speed so that's pretty nice obviously with it being a second gen Ryzen the memory makes a huge difference so I'm just used to running the 5th gen now at like 3800 all the time so it's quite funny to see a massive jump from the memory like on the 1st uh, and 2nd gen had so you can see I think we've got all the slots in there still all there quad channel so yeah that was pretty impressive 6600 so I'll save that and we'll create a new file so let's see what it does in uh, 
X265 now and uh, you can see with the tighter memory timings it should get a much better score you can see there's quite a big split again between the uh, two overkill outputs there Windows when it's in normal priority is supposed to be good at balancing them out but I think this just has so many cores it's uh, not doing a very good job basically so it's going to zoom along at the end here and uh, we did manage to get over 30 fps we actually gained 1 fps there just by overclocking the memory by 133 megahertz and tightening the timings a little bit so yeah that's quite a big jump so we'll keep going on the memory I think we'll try uh, 3466 next so the jump this time has been nowhere near as big you can see we've got 6647 rather than just 6600 so it's not like 150 points like last time but I've only bumped the uh, memory frequency up to oh it's just gone 100 points there <laughs> so it's, it's 10 percent so it's it's I don't know I haven't it's got less points that time it's it's not quite as big of a bump as last time but I didn't fiddle with the memory timings that time only the frequency so it's actually going down now that's quite funny oh we've got a blue screen see what it says memory so that won't quite stable I did have to put a little bit more on the uh, SOC voltage so maybe we need a little bit more on that so I just wanted to show you the final settings that I reached with the 2990WX here so frequency wise I was able to put it up to 1.46 volts and I was able to get a screenshot at 4.5 gigahertz hopefully the CPU-Z validation worked for that and uh, if not I also got one at 4.75 as you can see there that's on all 32 cores and we were using Asus Turbo V core which I realised I had installed on this board um, which I forgot about but that made it quite a bit easier so yeah can see we did that with a RAM still at 3400 so in the end the highest score I got in Geekbench here um, was 124,353 you can see the floating point performance is really really nice 174,000 pretty monster but unfortunately the memory score at 7400 kind of lets it down a bit that's because we were only able to do uh, 3400 C121111 now interestingly this was Geekbench stable but I wasn't able to run R20 and R23 at the same settings so for R20 um, and R23 which are both AVX we only managed to get 4.15 GHz out of it really at one point three five volts and um, it was hitting around fifteen thousand two hundred points just over fifteen thousand which is pretty decent as you can see there that was in R20 and we also had to drop the RAM clocks down to 14, 13, 13, 28 which I'll show you these uh, full settings in the BIOS in a second so for R23 uh, I think a 12900K scores just over 30,000 points and uh, a 5950X might score 31,000 if you've got a decent one maybe 32,000 now this is scoring 39,000 for me and again that is at 4.15 gigahertz same as R20 and same RAM settings as well for R15 I was able to keep it at 4.2 same as Geekbench um, a little bit higher on the voltage you can see 1.375 ish volts and we hit 6845 I wanted to get 7000 but it wasn't quite possible and that was with the memory at the faster settings there of uh, 
34, 100, 12, 11, 11. For Super Pie 32M, I managed to run it at 4.45. I did try 4.475, but unfortunately it crashed. And that was again on all 32 cores. Hit just over 1.4 volts. I think it was set to 1.425 in the BIOS. You can see that took 11 minutes, which is pretty slow. Should have really got a lot better than that. Um, but again, it was at C12. So the C12 at 3400 does pass the Super Pi 32M, but doesn't work in Cinebench R20, which is a bit weird. So I don't know what's going on there. And then finally for the uh, scores here, we've got W Prime 124M in 23 seconds, which is pretty decent. And you can see I even had the monitoring open here. And uh, you can see it was pulling about 427 watts. And that was at 4.3 gigahertz on 1.45 volts, or 1.425 volts, sorry. Uh, you can see that just down there on Asus Turbo V Core. So it was quite impressive, and obviously it runs a lot cooler in W Prime, even though it uses all of the threads. So it was only hitting 72 degrees Celsius, as you can see there. And I think the problem is it's unable to pull um, enough power when it's memory bandwidth limited. So I'm just going to quickly go over the BIOS settings that I used. Uh, pretty much most of the benchmarks, so there's only really two profiles that I used. So this is the 4.15 that I used for R20 and uh, R23. So you can see the memory is at 3400. Memory timing wise I'll show you all of them. So what I did was I basically took a memory preset out of here. I think this one is the 3600 preset that I used and then I tweaked the timings a little bit uh, for what I was wanting it for and obviously it's running at 3400 not 3600 so on the Cinebench R20 and R23 profile got 14, 13, 13, 13, 28 51, I think these are all the same as the other one might have uh, increased the TRFC a little bit, so that's 240 and I think I kept everything else the same so you can see all of the settings there Right, and we'll go into the VRM control. I left the low line calibration on auto because it seems to be doing a decent job. Uh, current capability also max that out. So you can see there. And Tweakers Paradise, I don't think I did anything in here. Nope. And then obviously we've got the voltages, so you can see this is 1.3625. And then 1.2 volts for the SOC. And 1.8 volts for the memory. That's pretty much it for that profile. So this is the profile that I used for uh, most of the other benchmarks. So everything but R20 and R23. So we've got 4.2 and obviously I could change that in Windows with uh, Turbo V Core for W Prime and Super Pi and whatever. But the timings will be the same, 3400 on the memory again. And uh, you can see the same voltages for the CPU, SOC and memory down there. So the only thing that's really going to be changed is these timings. So we've got 12, 11, 11, 11, 24 and these will be the same. And then the TRFC is 200, which is pretty tight. And then I think the rest of these are the same for the thirds. Now, all of these down here could be a bit tighter, to be fair, maybe. Uh, on Ryzen 5000, I have run 
all of these as twos and ones and uh, on the well obviously not the uh, C K E there but all of these here should be uh, ones and twos if, if you get a really nice board and memory but I'm not sure how that would work with the quad channel setup because obviously you've got four sticks here rather than two but yeah other than that it's pretty much the same Right, that's it for this BIOS setting and that's it for this video. So, uh, yeah, that's been the uh, 32 core Monster 2990WX. And for anyone wondering, that's what the uh, paste spread looks like on a thread ripper. That's what the uh, water block looks like. And there it is all cleaned up. Thread ripper. 2990 WX. See if I can get you the batch number. There you go.